Hello, and welcome to the Bible blog at MrKent.com. I'm Mr. Kent, and today we're going to take a look at chapter 27 in Genesis, and it's going to be a little longer than I'd like them to be, but uh, there's a lot of material here. And uh, so we'll, we'll just start right away. I'm going to be using the New King James Version to read from. When I put something on the screen, it will be the original King James Version. And if you're watching from the... Uh, from the web from the website just to the right of this video there's a link to biblegateway.com you can follow along there or you can uh, grab your bible and follow along but we're going to have to get started because this one's going to take a while now uh if you remember well if you read chapter 25 with us um uh jacob and esau were brothers uh, esau was born first jacob was born second esau had the birthright but he sold it to jacob for a uh, for some stew <laughs> that that Jacob cooked up and uh, because he was out hunting and apparently didn't catch anything and he came home weary and by the way when they went out hunting it took several days it wasn't just a, a hop on the four-wheel drive and go uh, take your rifle and go shoot something so anyway so now we are uh, several years later the boys have grown up and um, they are grown men and uh, and Isaac, their father, is getting very old, although he's got a long life ahead of him, but he can't see anymore. His eyes have failed him, and so he's he's probably wishing he was in heaven. <laughs> okay, so chapter 27 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered, Here I am. By the way, at this point in time, Isaac has no idea that that um, Esau had uh, sold his birthright to Jacob. So this is this is unbeknownst to him apparently. Verse two. Then he said, "Behold, now I am old; I do not know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat." that my soul may bless you before I die. So uh, he's asking him to go out and uh, and find him because all you know all through the time that Esau was growing up he would bring food home and and uh, Isaac would just uh, feast on it and he really he really loved his son and so he wanted him to go out and do that and then he was going to bless him because he wasn't sure how long he was going to live. So that's where we are and he tells him to go out and then when he comes back he says in verse 4 he says that my soul may bless you before i die now uh, a soul is a permanent uh a permanent thing it doesn't die your soul will never die you'll either end up in heaven and your soul will be blessed there or you'll go to hell and your soul will be tortured there but uh, your soul never dies so what he says is is i'm going to bless you with an eternal blessing now uh, back in chapter 25, when Esau sold his birthright for the food, uh, that was a that was also it, it was like a, a binding agreement between the boys, but it was it was a carnal agreement, and this one would be a permanent agreement. All right, so now verse five, Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. Now notice that when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt game and bring it verse 6 so Rebekah spoke to Jacob her son saying indeed I heard your father speak to Esau your brother saying and then just before we go on to what she heard him say I want you to notice that it's kind of a dysfunctional family here because <clears throat> uh, Isaac uh, called Esau his son and, uh, and uh, Rebekah called Jacob her son so they were like separated uh, that way now one reason we know from previous chapters that uh, Rebecca probably was watching over trying to help God <laughs> raise Jacob because she had been promised that he was going to be ruler over his older brother and uh, so when God spoke to her about what was going on inside of her womb so uh, so she's been really you know you don't need to help God but uh, uh, she was going to make sure that he was raised right. So she said to him, verse 7, Bring me game and make savory food for me that I may eat it 
oops, wait a minute. This is what she's telling uh, Jacob that uh, that uh, Jake that uh, Isaac had said. So verse seven, Isaac had said, "Bring me game and make savory food for me that I may eat it, and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death." So this is something that he's going to do in the presence of the Lord. He's talking about his soul blessing him. So it's going to be something that is a is a is a God thing. Okay, verse eight. Now, therefore, she says, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you and go to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of goats and I will make savory food from them for your father such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father that he may eat it and that he may bless you before his death. So he, she's sending them out to get two two animals and of course she's she's uh their kids they're young and so their their fur is going to be uh, real soft and and uh, more like a, a human being that's hairy and so she sends them out for two i'm sure one's going to be that she cooks and the other one she's going to use the uh this she's going to skin it and, and make uh, gloves and so forth as we're going to see verse 10 she says uh, then you shall take it to your father that he may eat it and that he may bless you before his death. Verse 11, And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Look, Esau, may, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. So he's thinking, this isn't going to work. Verse 12, Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. So uh, he's concerned, because there's no way that, uh, that uh, Isaac is going to to think that he is Esau because Esau as you might remember was a hairy guy and so uh, he, he this doesn't make any sense to him verse 13 what his mother said to him and by the way I gotta hurry through this this is a long chapter his mother said to him let your curse be on me my son only obey my voice and go get them for me so uh, and, and there's a comma there she says obey my voice and go and then there's a comma and get them for me so she's commanding him to get out there and get them and hurry up about it <laughs> now uh verse 14 and he went and got them and brought them to his mother and his mother made savory food such as his father loved so uh isaac was uh definitely uh, like the the food that was cooked and she's going to deceive him and make him think that it's uh it's what uh, what uh, uh, Esau brought in from hunting. And by the way, uh, this this was going to take more than one day because of all the things that are going on here. Uh, when <clears throat> when Esau went out hunting, uh, you know he had to travel a ways. He had to find the game, and uh, he had to kill it, and then he had to skin it and clean it and and drag it back home. So this wasn't going to happen overnight. This is going to take a couple days. Okay. But she wants him to hurry because there's no knowing how long it's going to take. So verse 15, Then Rebekah took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were, in, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. So she hadn't done the laundry yet. <laughs> and so she's got, she's got uh, uh, Esau's clothes. And uh, they're going to have the smell of a hunter, of an outdoorsman. And uh, so she's going to have him wear those those uh, the, the garments. And uh, that'll help with the smell. Verse 16, And then she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. So she did some sewing, some real quick sewing, and put um, must have made some uh, gloves and uh, some kind of uh, an outfit to go around his neck so that he would feel uh, all hairy. And just like his brother. Um, so this took a little bit of time. Verse 17. Then she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. So there he goes. So he went to his father, verse 18, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? So he's wondering, you know, because I'm sure Jacob didn't hang out too much with his dad, according to what we've read earlier. And uh, so there's some doubt here now. And maybe he was trying to sound like Esau. Who knows? But anyway, verse 19, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. 
So there's the there's a lie. <laughs> I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. So there's the word soul again. Uh, this is a this is going to be a permanent blessing. And uh, so he's trying to fool his dad. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. Now, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> First of all, he's telling another lie. And uh, and Isaac says, You know, like, you know, it hadn't been that long. It's only been a day or so, and uh, you're back so soon. And, uh, and then um, uh, Jacob says, the Lord your God brought it to me. So here's an interesting thing, because at this point in time, as we will see in, in uh, ongoing chapters, we'll see actually where where uh, Jacob turns his life over to the Lord. But at this point in time, he's saying, you know, it's like your God, Dad, not mine. So uh, it, it doesn't say that word for word there, but he says, your God brought it to me. Verse 21. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So he's hearing this voice. And of course, when you go blind or when people are blinded, their their other senses become much more sensitive. And so he's really got some doubts from what he's hearing. In verse 22, So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. So apparently Rebecca did a pretty good job of seamstress work and uh, made his hands feel like, you know, using the kid's uh, skin, uh, made some, some uh, nice gloves for him. And so he says, your hands feel like Esau in verse 23. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's. And so he blessed him. Okay, so here he is. So now Jacob has just gotten the blessing uh, of, uh, of the birthright of, uh, that would be turned over to him. In verse 24, then he said, are you really my son Esau? And Jacob said, I am. So there's still some doubt in, uh, in Isaac's mind. Verse 25, he said, bring it near to me and I will eat my son's game so that my soul may bless you so he brought it to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank so it was a feast isaac enjoyed it and um uh, he you know all this time he had all these doubts in his mind but it, it was so convincing to him that uh, he blessed him verse 26 then his father isaac said to him come near now and kiss me my son still some doubt Verse 27, and he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said. Now, we're gonna, so here's the thing. We're going to hear what he says. And these are, these are important words, and um, this is all one sentence. Uh, so listen closely. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. <clears throat> Therefore, may god give you so it's the smell of a field and he's he's considering this is god's blessing may god give you of the dew of heaven of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine so there's food and drink that uh, that uh, isaac is is uh, is blessing uh, jacob with in verse 29 let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you be master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. So he's talking, he, he thinks he's talking to Esau and he says, your mother's son, he's, uh, he's talking about Jacob bowing down to Esau. And so uh, then he says, cursed, cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. So here he's just blessed him, and of course he's blessed him with all kinds of good things, and uh, and so the blessing is there. Verse 30, okay, so that's all done. Now it happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. So here we go, now we got a problem. Verse 31. 
He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game that your soul may bless me. So that, that word keeps showing up. That's the permanent blessing he's talking about. Verse 32, And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Verse 33, then Isaac trembled exceedingly. And obviously, when things happen that cause you to tremble, it's pretty dramatic. It's pretty um, uh, like, it's like a panic attack. He's trembling. He says, who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. Because Isaac is uh, is recognizes that uh, he's made a mistake, but once he has made that blessing from his soul, it's done. It's permanent. Verse 34. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceeding great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. So here's the thing. Esau just realized after his dad told him he blessed Jacob, he's just realized that he ain't going to get the farm when dad dies. He just realized that he's not going to have much of anything and he's going to have to serve his younger brother. So here he is. He's bitter and he's crying. And uh, there's only, you know, Isaac can only eat one meal <laughs> like that at a time. There's no more. He can't, he can't even eat the food that uh, that Esau has brought. And he says, uh, verse 35, but he said, your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And so, you know, Isaac or uh, Esau is looking, he's, he still wants, he says, he says in verse 36, says, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. So he remembers that he sold his birthright. Uh, and uh, so he remembers that. And uh, now it all comes back. And, and uh, this the choice that he made when he was uh, made a choice that, that was inspired by the flesh because he was hungry and tired. And a lot of times we do the same thing. We, we'll make a bad choice because of our flesh nature. And so now it all comes back upon him. And uh, he says, he's supplanted me these two times. He says, he took away my birthright. And now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you, have you not reserved a blessing for me? So he's, now he's fishing. He's hoping that there's at least something for him. But uh, he also uh, didn't rightly speak there because uh, Jacob didn't take away his birthright. He sold it to him. And uh, so uh, as it all turns out, it's the will of God anyway because uh, God had told uh, Rebecca a long time ago that uh, – that little boy inside of her tummy was going to um, be a master over the older one. Verse 37. Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? So here he is, the grain and the wine. This is the property. This is the 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 fruit or the the uh, the crops that Isaac had and he has given them all to to Jacob and he says uh, and, and he says I have sustained him in other words uh, Jacob now is sustained he gets the farm when dad dies and uh, and and so then uh, <laughs> Isaac says what shall I do for you my son because there's nothing he can do it's, it's not a it's not a question like is there something I can do for you it's like telling him hey what is left? There's nothing left. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's it's not what he wants, but that's the way it is. There's absolutely nothing left to give him. Verse thirty-eight. And Esau said to his father, "Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, my father." And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So he's realizing that there's nothing left for him. And um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We'll flip over to Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 1 because it's one of my favorite verses there. Hang on a second here. Proverbs 29 and verse 1. 
All right, I had to put everything on pause for a second there. Verse 29 has got a verse, uh, verse 29, verse, chapter 29, verse 1 of Proverbs says, He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. That's something to remember. Because uh, if you're if you're stubborn and, and uh, hard-headed and God's trying to change your ways um, and uh, you won't change, he says there's going to come a time when it's suddenly when suddenly you will be destroyed and that without remedy. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to die, but God's blessing is going to be lifted, and uh, this is this is the same basic thing that just happened to to Esau. There is no solution. It's over. It's done. He is not going to get the farm when Dad dies. Verse thirty nine. Then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold. Your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Now, I already told that to uh, to Jacob. And so that's going to be his food and drink. And he says, and the dew of heaven from above uh, shall be, you know, what you get. Uh, it's just whatever, whatever the Lord provides for you. Verse 40, he says, by your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. So, in other words, you're going to serve him on the farm. And if you decide you want to serve him on the farm, you can break the yoke. But then you're you're out on your own. And uh, maybe you'll leave the country or something. All right. Now, so here, here at verse 41. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, now there's a key word, in his heart he said this, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. So um, his father, uh, he's, 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 um, he's expecting his father to die, but actually uh, Isaac lived to be 180 years old, and so uh, it's a long time yet. But, but in his heart he said this, and you know, he's... Uh, He's really, really, he's really wanting to kill his brother. And uh, it happens, if you remember back in uh, Genesis, uh, <laughs> when uh, Cain killed Abel. And so, verse 42. Now, here's something interesting. And the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. Now, wait a minute. It says back there in verse 41, he said these things in his heart. And the words of Esau, verse 42... Her older son were told to Rebecca. So who told her? <laughs> well, anyway, we'll just leave that one up for the Lord to explain someday when we get to heaven. So she sent and called Jacob, her, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now, here's an interesting thing about our flesh nature. You know that when, when somebody does you wrong, uh, and you sit around and you think about ways to get even with them. Uh, did you know that's actually comforting to our flesh? You know, maybe I'll do this. No, no, that's not good enough. I'm going to have to think of something else. And, and you can spend hours, rather than just forgiving, you can spend hours, miserable hours, trying to comfort yourself, <laughs> which is never going to happen, trying to get even. When I used to teach my Sunday school uh, boys and girls, about uh, getting even, you know, uh, you you both start out the same distance from the Lord, and, and your friend does something that's not right, and so now he's farther from the Lord than you are. So if you want to get even with him, you're going to have to do something that's going to make you as far from the Lord as he is. And so rather than getting even, you do what God does, and you forgive. But his brother right now, Esau, is considering ways to kill him. And she knows. I don't know how she found out, but she knows. Verse 43. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Now, if you remember, they were living down in the, the southern portion of the land of Canaan. And they came from up in Syria where Haran is located and where Laban lives. And that's a couple hundred miles away. So she says, flee to my brother. In verse 44, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you, and he forgets that you have done what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also 
of you both in one day. So she's worried that Jacob's going to get killed. So she says, you need to get out of here and go up north and stay with my brother. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and then in a few days, in, in her mind, in a few days, he'll forget it. And so uh, she's hoping that he will forget it. But, of course, as you probably uh, know, that he's not going to forget it. And uh, time will go by, and he will forgive. But at this point in time, he's looking for ways to kill Jacob. And Jacob is going to be looking for ways to get out of there. Verse 46. Here's an interesting verse. And Rebekah said to Isaac. Now, now she's talking to Isaac. And she says, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like these who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? And uh, so the, 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 uh, Esau had married some of these ladies back in uh, chapter 26, verse 35, which we won't take a look at. But he deliberately married some of these ladies, and uh, so they're around, you know, because they're, they're in the area there. So uh, it's just driving her crazy. So she, she tells Isaac, I do not want him to marry one of these girls. So there's chapter 27, and I went through it as fast as I could. There's a few lessons there to be learned and uh, some things that, are, that we're going to have to ask God about when we get to heaven and, and get the answers to. But basically the difference is, is Jacob was blessed. And he's going to, he, it says he'll be blessed with plenty of grain and wine and people will serve him. And um, he, he's going to be master over uh, over others and people that curse him will be cursed and all those things. Blessed, they're blessed, they're blessed things, okay? And uh, Esau, who lives according to the flesh, is going to be, uh, uh, he's going to be, you know, you reap what you sow. You sow to the flesh, you reap destruction. Well, he's going to reap what he sowed. He's lived to the flesh and he's going to have to just live by the flesh well anyway so that's enough for now this has uh, gone way too long anyway but uh, i hope that uh, you will learn something from this and i pray that you'll uh, you'll um, put your trust in the lord jesus and uh, let him teach you what's right and what's wrong and what to do and what not to do and read your bible and thank you and god bless you